Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. Okay, I'm just going to carry on with stitching down these pieces and I found a piece for here that I think it's a little bit better than what I had chosen. So now I'm just playing with a couple more little elements that I think we could squeeze in somewhere just because. So where's that one gone? Just because. We're going to put them on there just because. Okay, so let's get my needle and some thread. And away we go again. Let's get this big guy down first. He's got a pin in it in a location that could jab me. I really like the way that these doilies make it interesting. They sort of, they add texture and they add interest. They're all different. <clears throat> so they're they're good to look at because if you pick up crocheting, you can sort of see what stitches were used in them. So they're very interesting little pieces to have in your stash. <clears throat> Inexpensive to find if you can get to some op shops and find these types of things. If you can't, um, maybe consider teaching yourself how to crochet because it's it seriously is not hard because there are so many great YouTube videos out there that it's just patience and it's once you get your hands right that's the secret to it. the stitches aren't an issue they will happen but if you can struggle until you get your fingers holding everything right once you have that, you're away. Because the stitches are just variations of the same. <clears throat> Even if you can find someone that knows how to crochet and get them to show you how they hold their hands. When I find that I teach someone to crochet, that's the biggest st stumbling block is I seem to watch them struggle with that but as soon as it clicks as soon as the brain stops thinking about what you're doing with that positioning of your fingers and hands and the way your wrist moves it just just all starts happening it's like muscle memory kicks in so if you have thought about crocheting and you had tried and it didn't work and you were like convinced you couldn't have another go because i reckon it is the starting process, the how to hold your tension. I think that's the stumbling block. And once you get that, <clears throat> I think the next thing that is the trick to learn is how to read your work, how to look at your stitches or your knots and know where you are and what you've done because it then becomes a counting game. So if you can work out what your work is doing that you've completed so that you can accurately count and know where you are in your pattern, you're, you're on your way. Because it's infuriating when things don't work out because something's gone wrong with a stitch somewhere. You only need one stitch to throw you off. So if you've had a go and it wasn't successful, have another go and get onto YouTube because there's some amazing teachers out there <clears throat> for crocheting. Like I learnt from my grandmother and it did not work. I was too young, so my brain wasn't ready for crocheting. She gave me a pattern that was 
pretty tricky for a first timer. Thanks, Grandma. So, yeah, I think if I had have had YouTube and could just take my time and practice and sort of start off slow, I could guarantee I would have probably learnt crocheting. I think Grandma thought I was more advanced than I was. <laughs> I probably had it convinced I was an advanced child when I wasn't. The, um, the square that she had me do was a typical granny square, but not a typical granny square because as it came together with all this decorative lace type stitches, it then ended up in a flower, which is 3D in the center. Talk about set the kid up for failure. And she didn't have a pattern, if I recall. She, she wrote it out from memory. So we're sitting around the kitchen table. She'd come down to the farm for a week or so. They'd often do that. Grandma and Granddad would visit when we were kids. They lived uh, about an hour away, but Granddad was a retired farmer, so he was always keen to get down to our parents' farm and um, help out around the farm. So he would often service the windmill and service the pumps and service the tractor, just, you know, general maintenance type tasks and they'd come for a, a week and in that time grandma and I and mum we would sew so we'd drive to the biggest town to a fabric store and um, buy some fabrics and pattern and grandma would make us some clothes so I loved it it was fantastic I used to hate having to go to school because I was missing out on watching what was happening. So yeah, good times. And in amongst that, she decided, well, I asked if I could learn to crochet. I think I was knitting at the time, a project at school. And it was a big, big black and grey striped cat that was stuffed and you sit it on your bed and he was great thoroughly enjoyed making him so then I decided that I wanted to have a go at a jumper so we purchased the yarn and a pattern and it was a pink and black striped jumper with a big yellow stripe across the front I liked my bright colours, it would seem. Took a while, but I got it. I finished it with a little bit of help. Especially when you're reducing your stitches down to do the shaping of the sleeve. That's a bit tricky. But I did find it a bit boring, and that was the end of my knitting. I didn't knit anything else after that. Decided I wasn't a knitter. I haven't picked up knitting needles since. Oh, uh, no, I do lie. I bought some beautiful wool from a spinner when we were uh, traveling Australia for a little bit. We had sold a business and um, we thought we'd take six months off just to have a break because we'd gone from full-time work into this business. We'd quit our jobs to buy this business and we had worked for two years straight like, oh, crazy to turn this business around and then in the process started a second one. And then um, by the time we'd sold the two together as a package, we were exhausted, absolutely exhausted. And uh, we decided we would buy a caravan and go for a drive from Brisbane to Adelaide and then across to Melbourne and then we parked the van up in some storage at Geelong and then caught the spirit of Tassie across to Tasmania for a week and then come back got the van and made our way back up the coastline to Brisbane so that was the trip and it was to be six months but it ended up only being a couple months three months or something 
because the company um, that we had the business within, we sold our stores. They were ice cream shops. But we were starting to do a bit of work for the head office. Uh, my husband was training franchisees on how to become an owner of this business, this style of business. And I was doing a bit of training with a group of oh, six or seven others um, going into existing businesses and showing them techniques that they could use to increase their sales from selling right through to the way they were using their products and training of their staff and all that type of thing. Like a business coach is probably a better word for it. So in this little holiday, it's never a holiday, we were also following a bit of a rough schedule of going to all of these different businesses around Australia and spending a day with the franchisor. Well, I was at that stage. Gary wasn't because he was not training the owners to become business owners because they were already business owners. So it was just me and I was dropping into a store and spending a day with the owner and their staff and then on our merry way. So it was a lot of fun. Sort of gave us a reason to be on the road and kept us to a bit of a schedule. And we had, I think there was three or four stores in Tasmania. So that's how that sort of came to be. So it was a lot of fun. Got to see Australia and sort of kept our Head's a bit busy by, you know, still doing a little bit of work. So, yeah, that's, I don't even know where I was. What was I starting to talk about? How did I get off on that tangent? I don't know. Who knows? Now I've got this caught around that pin. Yeah, I've lost my train of thought. knitting <laughs> so as I was saying we were in the Adelaide area and we'd gone up to see the Handoff region town and there's a lot of touristy sort of things you can see up there and there was a lady selling hen spun uh, fibers so I bought some wool and we were cold. We were traveling when it was in winter. So I knitted a scarf. So that's the whole point of that whole story was I have knitted once after my childhood cardigan and cat was a scarf. So there you go. What a long way to get to a point. <laughs> Crazy. Very pretty area down that, that region of Adelaide. Adelaide's pretty. My goodness, what a pretty place. Tassie's beautiful. Well, I'm very biased. I like all of our country. Every area's got its own unique feel. So I'm pretty biased. Bit of a patriot. get rid of that pin now it's before it bites me okay oh this is taking time isn't it I don't know what episode we're up to probably episode six I sort of lose track when I am in the filming process so let's that's six hours admittedly we did sort of plan a few things in the first episode but there's six hours of work so far on this cover. Hmm. So that's why it's so hard to work out how much to charge for a journal, especially if you've got a journal that's got some slow stitch involved on the cover like this. So $25 an hour by six hours. And we haven't even constructed the cover yet. We've just been embellishing and stitching down. So, I don't know, ladies. We're doing this for the love of it. Oh, 
I guess if you were doing journals for Sai, you wouldn't go to this degree. You'd have to come up with some slicker ways of getting, getting a textile cover and that's where the sewing machine comes into it. Where you can just sort of whip around on a sewing machine. 10 minutes later, everything's secure. But this is a special journal. This is a journal for a nine-year-old girl who's just starting to dabble in the world of craft. How exciting. Probably won't be that exciting for her grandmother when she sees how much works in this that she may, may or may not need to supervise. <laughs> She's gonna be cursing me going, what have you done? Her grandmother has a great project that she would like to do. So she sort of has earmarked it for when I have some time up there on a holiday next. We sit down and plan it. And I think, I think it'll be a fantastic project for her because um, what she's been given from a aunt is a very old um, giraffe. It's a stuffed toy probably from the 70s. So she's an old giraffe and she's been loved by many grandchildren. But um, she's hung on to it and it sits in her room, but Mr. Giraffe is starting to look a little worn, especially around his face. So not only is the fur sort of falling off and degrading, but um, he's got a few splits. <laughs> she brought him out to show me and, oh, her face looked just as sad as the giraffe's, <laughs> the giraffe's face. Hang on, I'm just having a sip of my coffee. Yeah, she's holding this giraffe in her hand and he's a bit of a big boy. He's not, not a small giraffe. So she's holding it in her hand hugging him and um this giraffe's face i'm sort of looking at going what is wrong <laughs> it looks like he's got mange so she goes what can we do with this fellow i can't bear to throw him but he needs something you know so <laughs> she's giggling i'm giggling I'm like you sure need something he needs something to hold his innards in. He needs something to put some cheeks back on him. It was pretty funny. So I said to her that, you know, I had a bit of an idea. We could easily patch him. And she used to do embroidery when she was younger and really loves a good embroidered doily. She appreciates the work that goes into that type of thing. So the plan is to add patches to him that she can, you know, stitch on and then embellish him to some degree, which will sort of reinforce him and bring him back to his former glory and put a bit of a, a bit of a twist on him. So that's a project that's in the wind. Mr. Giraffe is going to get a makeover. I just need to wait till we're on holidays up there again or a long weekend or something so we can sort of sit down and nut out how we're going to do it, get us started, work out what fabrics she could use. He's a bit of a lemony sort of colour, so he would be beautiful, embellished, especially if we could be daring and do some satin roses or something like ribbon in ribbon roses or you know ribbon i don't think she's ever done that and i haven't done a lot of it i'm not super confident <clears throat> but that would be would be fun okay so that's on that's on have we got it all i think we have there we go we're done 
Yay. All right. Let's let's just I might bring the camera up a little bit, guys. Let's just have a little look at this. Yeah. Oh yeah. And we're yet to find something down that side, but I'm thinking whatever it is that comes down that side, that will be part of it and the ribbon will come out from underneath it that will tie our journal together. So where's our bag? There we go. That will be... Oh, yeah. How good's that? Once that's attached, and that then comes over, lickety split, we have a journal. Okay, let's have a look now at the inside cover. So once again, oh yes, we've got our, put the cover, put that and that away for now. Now, so, that's the back, that's the front, is that right? Why has this become difficult? Yeah, so yeah, that's, that's correct. All right, so I guess I guess the decision is what do we do here? This will be glued to the paper. Do we then glue some scrapbook paper over this with some fabric through the area where the signatures are stitched in? Because I want to make a pocket, but I want to make it four. Let me just grab. <clears throat> Let me just grab this box of Rachel bits and bobs. And in here are things like this that. Oh, see, that's got all journal pages in it. So okay. It's not what I thought it was. So they just all need to be stitched together to make journals. Oh my goodness, I've forgotten about all this. So what's this one? That doesn't have. That's already stitched in. be fun to include in it but maybe a simpler version like they're very elaborate but I sort of want to do something along those lines maybe an envelope flip and we put bits and pieces of ephemera in it my box is going to split here it's got too much in it Force that lid down. Um, okay, so all right, let's let's grab two envelopes. One, two. So I'm not saying that these are the envelopes we'll use, but they're certainly a good size for height. So I'm thinking that we use some scrapbook paper. I'm just grabbing it, guys. To Because if we put fabric in there, fabric's just a little bit harder for things to slide on. Where if it's paper, if it's paper, then when we make something out of these envelopes, let's say that that's glued down it'll slide in nicely 
but what we can have is something as a, a pocket which can be fabric and we can embellish it a little so the plan is i think we need to make a panel here Just thinking, we need to make a panel that becomes a pocket. Now we know we've got six inch paper. How big? Could we use? I think I need to get some calico. I'm just looking around to see if I got some torn pieces off without going to my big. Um, doesn't look like I do. I wonder if we do a pocket right through. I know I said we were going to put Edie's work on the back cover if she does a patchwork. Um, sorry guys, I'm just thinking logistics. Uh, da, 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 da. So the paper is 12 inch. So we need to know so it's going to finish there and then that's potentially the wrap so if we get ourselves a piece of calico that's seven inches we should be pretty pretty close to being where we need to without it butting into spines and being, yeah, I, I think, I think seven inches would be a good, good size. So I'm just going to cut and snip this. You can't quite see. We're maybe about five and a half inches tall. Let's just measure one more time. So it's nice and deep. Five and a half inches would be a nice deep pocket. Okay. So I'm going to cut this fabric at five and a half. I'm going to rip it. And then I'm going to snip it at seven inches. I hope that's big enough. Might make it just a fraction bigger because we can always just snip it down. I rip it down, sorry. Get rid of the salvage. And here's our pocket. Okay, let's put this away. Don't think we'll need calico again for a little while. So I'm going to put it away, as in out of my way. Okay. So, I might grab my little, uh, this thing to, my wool mat. So, the theory is, we will have a nice, chunky, embellished pocket on the inside of our journal. It may or may not need to be cut down a little bit more in size, but I think it'll be pretty close. Worst case, I might just keep whatever I do in a little bit. I think it will need to come down a fraction. Now, this has been sitting there looking at me. And I'm thinking I'm going to use this piece of embroidery as part of my pocket starting. All right, 
let's let's grab all these fabrics back that we were playing with and we're gonna put together a little collage using some of these bits and pieces and at the same time I'm going to tidy up as I go so that I can then put these back into the cupboard and get them off of my desk I don't think we'll use any of this tilda I don't think we'll need a big floral element we decided that these weren't really the colors that were on this journal anyway so they just need to go back didn't use that one on the front so i don't really want to bring it in i do love this check I know what we need to do on that cover. I just looked down to the floor. We need to put some X's on this section here, like we did down here. That's another little job. So we've got a scrap of that. That's a possibility. This I did decided I didn't like because it's real slippery. We have a bit of stripe. That'd be good. Might as well use, use that. Let's pin this guy into position. Have a little bit of music. Need to keep that out because we will use it as embellishing. Don't think we need this floral. I'm packing away an awful lot of fabric here. I hope there's going to be something left to actually use. Maybe we will need to take a snippet off this. Mm, no. Got enough flowers happening with the little embroidery. Got a little bit of this pink. have we got we didn't use any of these wheat type colors purple threads everywhere so they're no good to me they can go back into the stash we could bring in that but it's I don't know I don't know if I like those to be honest I sort of feel like we could be a little bit brighter we don't need this piece because it's just all floral so that can be popped away got a bit of white here that we haven't used and I'm back to these all right, I feel like I've organized myself anyway. Maybe I do use these. They're sort of the right color. And in a small area, yeah, see, I sort of like, sort of like that actually.
What could we put through there? Maybe we put a bit of lace. Um, 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 um. Just looking across my desk to see if there's a morsel of something. There's a little bit of lace there. That would be something interesting. Um, what else have we got? A bit of pink lace. That's the wrong pink. I do have a piece of this. This is just the edge off of a, a doily. So I do like do like that. That could look a bit cute. I like it better just randomly through there and another colour in there. Just never know where collaging is going to go because it's just sort of evolves, doesn't it? problem with this fabric is it frays really easily so I'm not convinced maybe if I overcast stitch it that will that will help I think I might have to otherwise it's just gonna disintegrate I don't like it. Why don't, why don't I like it? What's wrong? The colours are right. That's a bit better. Yeah, I like that. Okay. Oh, I was just starting to think I was going to give up on this, actually, and head down looking for something else. And then suddenly it just sort of comes together. Just a bit of stitching here and there. Sort of feel like I need something under that lace. Maybe I pop in a piece of this. Might as well use it. And if I can ensure that my sides are all under something or overstitched by something, at least. I 
I think that's got potential. I'm going to just pin that now. Just not sure about that piece. I do like it and it probably will, but I'm just going to get this background down and secure so that I know that these pieces aren't going to fray. I probably won't do a tacking stitch. I think I can just go straight into an overcast stitch and that will get everything nice and just need to raise that a fraction. So I've got a bit of bit of surface there to stitch into down here. Yeah, I'm happy with that. Be good to just use these pieces. And they're going into a spot where it's not going to be nice and secure too for them. So let's just thread up the needle and see how we go. I need a fairly sharp needle because we're going through this satiny, rayony sort of fabric. So I want to know that it's okay. Here we go. Let's see how this comes together. That pin's going to be in the way. Oh, goodness sakes. Round we go. Come on. <coughs> That's sitting nicely. And that will go a long way to stopping that from <clears throat> fraying into a slithery little threads. Do this little blanket, not blanket stitch, um, over whip stitch, overcast stitch. And it'll give it a nice little feature to bring making it a little bit more uh, rustic to match what we've done on the front okay <clears throat> all right yeah happy with that <clears throat> gosh where did that 43 minutes go goodness me what did we achieve we did stitch down some things on the cover, that's right. And then we've nutted out our pocket. <clears throat> yeah, that's good. <clears throat> I'll be able to go and zigzag this pocket on to that piece of big piece of calico with my sewing machine because I've got this little edge around. <clears throat> Gee, goodness me. <clears throat> Sorry, guys. I've got this little edge sticking out here so I can drop a zigzag stitch in there and it's not going to interfere. Let's make this a little bit quicker by doing a through the top and out the bottom with my needle instead of up and down, up and down. So we've just sped up the process a little bit. That's great. That little embroidery has found a home in a little girl's journal. I suppose too by using this fabric, <clears throat> this shiny, slippery fabric, it just shows that you can embroider slow stitch all sorts of fabrics together. And I guess this young girl, she's not going to have the budget to go and buy beautiful cotton fabrics from a quilt shop. 
she's going to be using all sorts of snippets. Maybe she's got some clothes that were once her favorite, but she doesn't wear anymore. Well, you know, she can use those types of fabrics in her journal. So she has some pretty sequin dresses and you know what I mean, you know, fabrics that aren't the norm that you would go to if you were doing slow stitch. And are often the fabrics that these kids can get e their hands on easily. Okay. Just coming up this side and I'm going to need to change my thread because it's just starting to run out. But that's great. That's sitting beautifully. I'm really happy with that. So this will be the last stitch. could have stitched this so that I didn't waste so much on the back. I always think of doing that, but I never do it. Instead of having it wrapping around like that, you come up next to your last stitch so that you're sort of just scooting across the back. Then you do your nice stitch, then you scoot across, and then you come back out to do your nice stitch. And you would pretty much halve the use of your cotton, but doesn't matter. Does not matter. Okay. I'm just going to go up this side now. Something come through with that knot. Some Threads, got threads everywhere. At least now I can pack up my desk a little bit. Put some of these fabrics away. Peppers at the window looking at me quite intensely. I wonder what's going on. She's probably thinking, when is breakfast? What's what's happening? like 6 30 in the morning dad's not out of bed yet he's not crazy like me he's not an early bird i am which works out well because i'm most alert in the morning so i get into my craft room At the crack of dawn, once I've fed the dogs, fed the cats, made a coffee, and I'm in here like a rocket. Turn on the camera, and I usually do two videos, sometimes three, depending if my husband has a sleep in. If I get in here at six o'clock and he doesn't emerge till nine, well, that's great. I can just about get three videos done. And then we start our day, do our work. <clears throat> and then later in the afternoon, I might get a chance to start uploading some of the videos into the back end of YouTube. And they just sit there on a certain day so that they roll out as, as is needed. So I think that's my style of YouTubing. I, that way, if I have a couple of days where I'm just too busy, I've got to go to work and unload containers and, you know, do all those types of tasks. At least I know there's videos <clears throat> done in advance. So I think that's my system. You've got to take your hats off to the girls that do a video every day. Maybe... In the off season of Christmas, I might do a bit of that. But at the moment, I'm thinking my style is going to be a series 
where I literally start to finish, <coughs> excuse me, <coughs> start to finish the series with you. So you get to see everything, every little stitch. And to fill the time, I'm going to chat. So whether you learn anything is another thing, but you can certainly come along for the ride. <clears throat> so some series might be 10 episodes, some might be 30 episodes. I guess it depends on how long it takes me to do it, doesn't it? Yes, Fudgy, you're back again. So I've got fudge now at my feet. I've got pepper at the window. No sign of bandit, but he's probably eating something, chewing something. He's digging in a pot plant at the moment. Such a helpful little hound. Oh, he's out there. I can hear him wrestling, goosing around. Yeah, he's taken to this pot plant that has a big agave in it. That I've had for years and years, like we're probably talking 20 years, and that agave has given me many, many baby plants, and every house we've ever been in has had offspring from this original. And now Bennett's decided that he wants to dig all the soil out and spread it all over the patio. Isn't he a blessing? woman pain in the neck that's what he is so that's that patch work stitched on so I might just use the last of this thread and come up this side how are we going for time the time is a ticking so what I will do is I will Stop the camera. And I will turn it back on and we will keep going. If I can just stop what I'm doing to do that. Just a few more stitches, just a few more stitches. Shocking. It's like when you know you should hop up and go and cook dinner. But just a few more stitches. And then you look over to your husband and you think, mm, he doesn't look too hungry. I'll do a few more stitches. So before you know it, you've cut off another piece of cotton. And well, you can't stop because you've started another piece of cotton. So you might as well finish, finish that piece of cotton. And you glance over and he's still not showing signs that he's hungry. So you don't feel hungry. So you keep stitching. All right. I do need to stop now because I need to trim that fabric back. So I'm just going to knot that off. Maybe one more stitch. <clears throat> I'll knot it off. And that got rid of that piece of cotton. Okay. All right, guys. I'm just going to trim now. Along that top edge. That was a bit crooked. And now we can come back through and stitch, stitch that. But I will need to stop the video and I will see you in the next video. Bye for now, guys. Bye.